optional tidbits to stimulate the spiritual appetite. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Join us now as we go to the live broadcast of Spiritual Appetizers Podcast. Welcome and thank you for joining us in this episode of Spiritual Appetizers Podcast. Episode 195, Our Zeal for God. The appetizer that we will be using in this episode is from Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. As disciples of Christ, we need to always remember that our zeal for God must be according to knowledge and not ignorance. Read with me now Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. Brethren, my heart Desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. Paul recognized something. He recognized that his people had a problem, and he wanted to fix it. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 1, he said it was his desire that Israel be saved. But in order for him to follow through with this desire, he had to recognize the problem that Israel had. There's a lot of congregations today that have this same problem that Israel had. They have a zeal for God, but they haven't studied their word enough to know how to be pleasing to God. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, in verse 15, the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If we have not studied, then we cannot have faith. In Romans chapter 10, in verse 17, it says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The problem here with Paul's brethren is that they were ignorant of the righteousness of God. They did not have enough faith to understand that their zeal for God was not right. They did not have enough knowledge. And we have a lot of people in the world today that do not have enough knowledge to understand that their zeal for God is not according to knowledge. There's a lot of people in the world today that are worshiping God, but they're not worshiping him properly. And thus their zeal for God is vain. In Matthew chapter 15 and verse 9, it says, In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 3, we see this is exactly what's going on in Israel with Paul's brethren. Paul desired that his brethren need God, that they desired that Paul desired that his brethren be saved. But their zeal was not according to knowledge. And notice in verse 3, it says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. If you desire to establish your own righteousness, then you have not submitted to the righteousness of God. If you read his word, you build faith in your life through study and application of that word then you're not going to establish your own righteousness because you're going to understand that you don't have any righteousness in and of yourself. There is not one that is righteous. No, not one. The only one that's ever been righteous that lived as a human here on this earth is Jesus Christ. He is the only one that could have established his own righteousness, but he didn't do that. He didn't seek his own righteousness. He sought the righteousness of the Father. And that's what Paul wanted for these people here. He wanted them to establish righteousness through God. In verse 1, again, it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. We cannot be saved unless we establish the righteousness of God in our lives. We have to stop being ignorant. We cannot be ignorant of God's word and be saved because faith is built in us through God's word. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. As long as they were trying to seek their own righteousness and establish their own righteousness in their life, then they would not be pleasing to God. Turn with me 
to Hosea chapter 4, and we're going to read verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. And we're going to see how this problem that Paul talked about in Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 5, went a long ways back in Israel's lives, all the way back to the time of Hosea. In Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. As disciples of Christ, we need to always remember that our zeal for God must be according to knowledge and not ignorance. Israel, during Hosea's time, was still having a problem with ignorance. They had not established the righteousness of God in their lives. And they would have a problem with this throughout their history, even up to the time in which Paul wrote the book of Romans. Here it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What the writer of Hosea could have said here, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, that my people are destroyed for lack of faith. They had not studied the law enough. They did not know how to live. They did not know the requirements of the law. And so God destroyed them for lack of knowledge, and he also rejected them from being priests for him. Today, we are the priesthood of God. We are God's special people, his royal priesthood, according to Peter. And if we have the same lack of knowledge, the same lack of faith that they had, and we're ignorant of God's law, we're ignorant of God's word, he's going to reject us from being priest for him today as well, because we cannot be pleasing to him unless we have faith in our lives. And without knowledge of his word, then we cannot have faith in our lives. This is something that we need to understand, is as long as we are ignorant of God's word, which is what we are to be sanctified by, John chapter 17 and verse 17, sanctify them by thy word or thy truth. Thy word is truth. Then we cannot be pleasing to God because we're not sanctified for his service. And that was the problem back here in Hosea. God's people were not sanctified for his service. They were not set apart for him. They were looking to establish their own righteousness, the same as the Israelites were during the time of Paul here. Look at verse 3 of Romans chapter 10 again. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. This is why they were destroyed here in Hosea. It's because they had not submitted to the righteousness of God. We need to submit to the righteousness of God, the same as the noble Bereans did in Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. Notice what this says. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. There are a few things that we need to learn from Acts chapter 17 about not being ignorant and about submitting to the righteousness of God. As disciples of Christ, we need to always remember that our zeal for God must be according to knowledge and not ignorance. This is what the people here in Acts chapter 17 and verse 11 understood. These noble Bereans understood that their zeal for God had to be according to knowledge. When the apostle Paul would preach to them, they would go to the scriptures and confirm what he was telling them. They wanted to be very zealous for God, but they didn't even take the Apostle Paul's opinion for it. They searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. And so they were more noble than those in Thessalonica. The Thessalonians did not do this. And too many in the Lord's church today do not look to establish their own faith. They simply take the word of the preacher. And in doing so, they are ignorant of God's word. And so they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. If we come to the Lord's worship, but we don't know his word, and we continue in that state for a long time, we'll be like the people in the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12 and following, where it says, by this time you ought to be teachers. You have need of someone teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and have come to need milk and not solid food. You see, that's where the Thessalonians were. They ought to have been teachers because they were studying the word like the noble Bereans, building faith in their lives, getting rid of the ignorance out of their lives, and making their zeal according to knowledge. But they weren't doing that. And so they were like the people in Hebrews chapter 5. 
In time, you ought to be teachers. You have need of someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. They didn't even understand the first principles. And so Paul had to tell them in chapter 6, we're going to move on beyond the first principles. After we get these down, we're going to move beyond them so that you can learn how to have faith in your life, so that you can learn why we study God's Word. Why do we follow Him? Because His Word is truth. As disciples of Christ, we need to always remember that our zeal for God must be according to knowledge and not ignorance. The people in Thessalonica, they did not understand this, but the noble Bereans did. And because of this, they searched the scriptures daily to find out whether or not what the Apostle Paul was preaching was correct. Now, obviously, the Apostle Paul was preaching the word of God. He was inspired. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped unto every good work. But the noble Bereans, even though he was preaching inspired, still wanted to make sure that what Paul was telling them matched with the rest of Scripture. Today, we need to be holding our preachers and our Sunday school teachers and everyone that teaches God's Word accountable to the Scriptures. Make sure what they're teaching is right. Then your zeal will be according to knowledge and not ignorance. And so we need to be very careful that we be like the noble Bereans and not the Thessalonians. In Acts chapter 17, verses 30 and 31, just dropping down a few verses, the Bible says this, Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And so we see there was a time in which God overlooked ignorance when the word of God was not completed, when it was still being written to them, and they had to find an inspired writer or go to the temple in order to read God's word, it was more understanding that they would have a little ignorance in their lives. But today, with the word of God so prevalent in our lives, with it so easily to read, we have it on our phones, we have it on our computers, we have a book copy of it in almost every house, but we neglect it. There's no longer any excuse for neglecting the word of God. Truly, these times of ignorance God once overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Repentance is not optional. It is something that God requires in our lives because we're all sinners. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death. And so repentance is not optional. We all have things that we need to repent of, and we need knowledge, faith in God in order to repent. We can't be ignorant of sin in our lives. We must find it out, find out what Christ did for us, and then we must repent. Why? Because he's appointed a day in which he's going to judge the world in righteousness. That day is coming, and it has been appointed. We might know we might not know when it's coming. We might not know when it's going to happen, but it already has been appointed, and we are drawing closer to it every single day. It could be in the next five minutes. It could be in the next year. It could be in the next hundred years, but whenever it does come, we need to be ready, and it won't matter whether we're still living or if we passed away. If we have passed away, then our opportunity to repent will have been gone. We'll no longer have that opportunity. But as long as we have breath in our lungs, we can still come back to God. And we can still be happy for what he's done for us. We can still rejoice for what he's done for us and be obedient to him. As disciples of Christ, we need to always remember that our zeal for God must be according to knowledge. Read with me Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Notice what Jesus tells them to do. First, come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Back when this was written, he was still on earth so that you could physically come to him. But today, there's only one way to come to him. There's only one way to find out what he will do for us, what he is capable of doing for us. If we labor and are heavy laden, 
We have to come to him through his word. We have to read it and understand it. Then we have to put it in practice in our lives. That's how we come to him. And he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Back then, oh, wouldn't it have been wonderful to be able to go and sit at the master's feet and listen to his sermons and hear him teach? But for us, we can still do that, but we have to read it from his word. We have to sit at the master's feet studying his word on a daily basis so that we can come to him and take his yoke upon us. We must learn from him. For he is gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That's how we build our faith today. We come to him. We learn from him. and We take his yoke upon us because it's not burdensome. It's light. Even though it brings along with it persecution. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. The life that he offers us is a wonderful life. As disciples of Christ, we need to always remember that our zeal for God must be according to knowledge and not ignorance. So today, listen to God by reading his words. Hear his voice by studying his message in his word. Hear him, believe him, repent of your sins, confess him, and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins if you have not. And make your ignorance of him go away today by building faith in your lives. As disciples of Christ, we need to always remember that our zeal for God must be according to knowledge and not ignorance. So as we go about our lives today, let us take this little bit of food and apply it to our lives, digest it into our lives, and mold our lives around the Word of God. This has been Spiritual Appetizers, small devotional tidbits to stimulate the spiritual appetite. Thank you.